Hey everyone, author and astronomer John Reed here, and this is the moon through 10 telescopes. This is gonna be awesome. All right, when you clicked on this video, I just know some of you were thinking this, 10 telescopes in a row, which would be cool, but would it work? Well, let's say we ordered the telescopes from smallest to largest with the largest at the end, and we were looking through the smallest. And let's say they were perfectly lined up. What would you see? We can test this with just two telescopes. So we've got the moon centered in one telescope and a small telescope, and we're gonna put a slightly larger telescope in front. Do you see anything? <laughs> it's just a blur though, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? No way. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. The reason that didn't work has to do with how a telescope works. Each telescope itself takes light from far away, the moon, and brings it to focus at the focal plane. Check this out. If we remove the eyepiece, we can project an image of the moon onto my hand. Cool. So what happened when we stacked the two telescopes together? Well, the scope simply saw, at best, a blurry blob. Here's a far more interesting case. What if we stack the telescopes from largest to smallest? What do you see? Well, let's test this with two telescopes. All right, let's get the moon centered. So we've got our second telescope here, straight through. If we put this in perfectly in front, you can see that it has almost no effect on the image at all. Look at that. Cool, huh? The telescope we place in front is simply so out of focus, its only effect on the view is that it makes it dimmer. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so for the real test, we're gonna set up three telescopes at a time, starting with the smallest and moving on to the largest. And we're gonna place these on the Panther light mount from Track the Stars. Now I'm using this mount and not the mounts these telescopes came with because almost none of these beginner telescopes came on very sturdy mounts at all. Certainly not sturdy enough to take a photo with. This is the best way I can think of to give you, the viewer, an authentic stargazing experience through YouTube. So special thanks to Track the Stars for sending along a mount that can do, well, this. For consistency, we're gonna use the same eyepiece in every telescope, a basic 25 millimeter Plossel, which is an eyepiece that comes standard with a lot of beginner telescopes. I'm also gonna use the Celestron Next YZ because this is the best cell phone adapter that I know of. To capture the images, we'll use an iPhone 16 in video mode. Now I'm not gonna stack or process these images in any way. All right, let's get started. The first three telescopes are commonly referred to as the hobby killers. Not my term, but if you go on Reddit and post that you're thinking of purchasing one of these, well, you'll get a thousand comments telling you not to. These are known as hobby killers mostly because of the mounts they come on and not the optics themselves. All right, but first we have the Travelscope 60. Despite what the marketing department says, any telescope that looks like this is not designed for space at all. They're designed for spying on your neighbors, and that's probably the reason why they're so popular. However, like a pair of binoculars, it's still totally capable of seeing the moon. Here's a 114 millimeter Newtonian with Bird Jones optics. That's a little extra lens in the focusing assembly that doubles the magnification so that they can put higher magnifications on the box at the expense of optical quality. And here's the optical tube from the Power Seeker 70 EQ. This telescope's mount is infamous for being almost impossible to use. All right, we're gonna take a video through the Celestron Travelscope 60. We can see the brightness is too high, so I'm gonna drag the brightness down till we can see the details. Right there, that looks pretty good. All right, okay, let's see what happens if I zoom in on the phone. There we go. All right, zooming in, let's look at this crater right here and adjust the brightness. There we go. All right, can we pan around? All right, there's your zoomed in view of the moon through the Travelscope 60. All right, let's move over to the Power Seeker. So I'm gonna move this along with the diagonal over to the other scope here. All right, so we've got the moon framed up in the Power Seeker 70. Now, if I just click on it, we're gonna adjust the brightness again. Ooh, look at that. All right, so there we are at 1x magnification on the phone. Now let's zoom in and see what it looks like. Let's zoom in on that crater there. It's surprisingly good detail. The Plato crater right here. I framed up the shot in the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT 114. Let's see if we can get that moon in focus. 
Now we want to zoom in. A little closer, a little closer. So notice it's rotated 180 degrees and Newtonian telescopes do that. It's also moving across the field of view and that of course is the Earth's rotation because this is a completely manual mount. Okay, at this point, I'd like to point out that while the moon is by far the best and most exciting target for beginner stargazers, it's a terrible target for comparing one telescope against another. And that's because the moon will look amazing in almost any telescope. The moon will look amazing in a paper towel roll. The moon is just amazing. Now, if you really wanna compare one telescope against another, you wanna use a star cluster. I recommend NGC 457. And then as you're looking at that star cluster, you wanna look at how the stars look, are they discolored, and you wanna see if they look good all the way from the center of your field of view to the edge of the frame. All right, let's get these telescopes off and get the next batch on. All right, next we've got some common beginner telescopes, some that I really like. Here we've got the classic 102 millimeter refractor. Sometimes you can find these at Costco for under $200, and I actually like them. We've also got the 130 millimeter Newtonian from Celestron, and this is the same between the StarSense 130DX and the 130SLT. And finally, we've got the new 127 Mac from SB Boney. Now this is a telescope designed for the moon, so let's see how it does. All right, so here's this SB Boney 102. We're gonna take the brightness down here. And now let's zoom in. Wow, look at that. Okay, just pan around a bit. Look at that, very cool. All right, well, there we go. So now moving over to the Celestron 130, let's bring down that brightness. Notice about the same amount of magnification as the 102 here. All right, let's zoom in here. There we go. Look at that. And again, we're a Newtonian here, so we're rotate it 180 degrees. Very nice. I like this view because when you're really zoomed in and you just let go, no electronics, and all the movement you're seeing is just the rotation of the Earth. Ready for the Mac? All right, there's one X on the phone. This is the 127 Mac. Look at that. That's some serious focal length. Okay, ready to zoom in? Wow. Oh my gosh, that detail. Incredible. Okay, just using the Earth's rotation to let that drift across the field of view. We can see it shimmering in the unsteady atmosphere. There it goes. We zoom in even more. There's 7x seven, seven on the iPhone. This one is really stunning. All right, regardless of which scope you have, there are tons of targets to see on the surface of the moon, and that's why I wrote the book 50 Things to See on the Moon. Now, I wrote this book about six or seven years ago, and in the year 2020, it won the Simon Newcomb Award for Excellence in Science Communication. Now, the way this book works is you take it out on any day of the lunar cycle from day two to about day 14, and there's something new to see every night. So the book follows the line between night and day on the moon, that's the Terminator, and as the days go by, you get to see a little bit more and a little bit more of the moon. And the book follows along with the phases of the moon, so there's always something new to see. Definitely check out 50 Things to See on the Moon wherever books are sold. All right, let's get these ones off and the next batch on. All right, for our final configuration, we've got a C8. We've got a 1,000 millimeter refractor and an eight inch Newtonian. This is what I feel like this Track the Stars mount was really designed for. Let's look at the moon. Whack, right in the head. All right, now we're on the eight inch Newtonian here. Adjust our light levels. Ready to zoom in? Let's go for it. There we go, there's five times. So you notice here that we don't have nearly as much magnification as that Max Sutoff we just used. That's because the focal length on this scope is not nearly as long. 
That said, the aperture is higher, so if you're using an eyepiece, you should be able to see more detail at high magnifications. There you have it, the moon through the Newtonian. iPhone just loves to switch cameras. All right, so here's the Explore First Light 1000 millimeter refractor. Ooh, you can see some chromatic aberration there with the scope. Interesting. Okay, so we can pull down the brightness and that gets rid of the chromatic aberration. Center that up. Let's see if we can zoom in and refocus. Wow, look at that. <laughs> what a great little scope. Here we go. Okay, Let's see if we can zoom in anymore. That is a nice view. You can pan around. All right, well, there's your thousand millimeter refractor telescope. Not bad. There it is, holy cow, look at that. There we go, 1x magnification on the phone. We'll tap it, no issues with setting the brightness here, that's for sure. Okay, ready to zoom in? Let's do this. There we go, that's so cool. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Can we go in any more? Wow. Watching that and knowing that it's the Earth rotation is giving me vertigo. <laughs> really? Let's just take one more look at this mount. There's no motors in the mount itself. This is purely for visual astronomy. We've got this encoder set up here with Sky Safari. So check this out. We can point the telescopes anywhere in the sky and the iPhone shows us exactly where we're pointing. We can also use Sky Safari to find things in the sky. So let's say you've got a star here or a comet. We can hit SLU 2 and the app will show us exactly where we need to push the telescope to hit our target. So a big thank you to Track the Stars for sending us the TTS-160 Panther Light mount to try out tonight. All right, there's nine telescopes. Let's go over to telescope number 10. This telescope is a Dobsonian, so it's got its own mount. Let's head over here. Take this off with the adapter. All right, moving over to the Dobsonian. Slide this in. Turn on the Telrad. Find the moon. Get it in focus. Wow, that was easy. All right, so this is the 12-inch Dobsonian telescope with a focal length of, I think, about 1,500 millimeters. Should we zoom in? I think we should. Look at that. Wow. That is beautiful. I like these Dobsonian mounts as well because you can just move them with a slight touch of the hand. There we go, that is just so beautiful. You can see the 180 rotation because this is a Newtonian telescope. That aperture just gives us access to this magnification, which is really great. Now the actual way to zoom in is to change the eyepiece out. And so we've just used the same eyepiece for every telescope to be consistent, but we could get even better views by switching out that eyepiece to a lower focal length and we actually would have access to those higher magnifications at even higher quality. But this is, this is pretty darn good. There we go, just guiding it with my hand there. Look at that. Wow, all right. 
Well, I hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to take your stargazing to the next level. Check out our books on Amazon, especially our new book, 50 Things to See with Binoculars, and of course, 50 Things to See on the Moon. Thanks again to Track the Stars for sponsoring this video and sending us this mount to try. And remember, the future is looking up.